So this is the, the browse area, uh, and we showed you before sort of the, the catalog area, which is, you know, you, you, you go to your catalog, you decide, you know, what time or, or time-based, what, what you want to see for assets, uh, what volume you may want to see um, or browse through. Uh, but the browse area is really an efficient way to get in and, and see exactly what's been indexed in what location uh, and then use that. To, to browse through the contents uh, of, the, of the volumes that you've indexed. So you see here that um, these are all the volumes that I've indexed, and they have different designations uh, in terms of the coloring of them. See, they're, they're gray if I don't have permission for them locally. That means that they're on volumes that I can't get to. So if I, if I go to uh, my Media 1 volume, and I just look at uh, the stuff that's here, I'll see that all of these source bubbles are gray. Uh, if they were available to me, they'd be blue, which means they're amountable to my system. Uh, so basically, I got to call the administrator and tell them, you know, hey, give me access to to media one, um, so I can get access to these these full res media. This is what I want. Um, if I have a volume here that is uh, available to me, like the Kevin volume here, so I go into here. Looks pretty similar. I'm sure these are, yeah, as you can tell, these are you know, duplicates of each other. Uh, but these files uh, show up as not only available to me, but green. They show up as mounted locally. Uh, although there's one here that's on the Kevin volume itself, because Kevin shows up as white, um, that's not mountable, or that's that's mountable, but not accessible currently to me on my workstation. It's just not mounted to my workstation. So all I have to do here is go here once again and hit mount. That turns that bubble to green. Uh, and you'll see that if I hit refresh here, that Kevin volume just went to green as well. So that shows me the third status of the volume mounted to my local workstation, which is green here on the uh, sidebar. Um, so real easy here, once again, to go in and, and see what you have. Um, uh, so for example, if I just go into my Demo Media 2, you'll see that there was the clip that I just did in the last section. Uh, and instead of having just thumbnails now, now I have a full proxy of it. Because since I ingested it to the server, re-indexed it in that location, it could go make the proxy. Uh, so now I have both Label Card Reader, which was where it was initially indexed, and I have Demo Media 2, uh, which is the primary now where it was where it was uh, proxied from. Uh, so that now gives me the ability to access that file from the server, even though it came in from someone's desktop drive. Um, so in any case, uh, the, the browse area here has the ability to either show you the top level of a volume or you can go to recursive path listing, which basically shows you everything, you know, all the way down the structure of the, of the volume. Um, now you can see here that uh, it should line up my demo media 2 that shows me as my demo media 2 primary version of this but it also exists in this DJI volume uh, now if I wanted this to be the primary version of, of these particular clips I can do that uh, because it is in the DJI folder I'll just highlight the DJI folder there and from here I can highlight any of these files and say I want this to be the primary instead of the demo media 2 which on a refresh will show you that that now went offline for me because well, when it didn't go offline it went uh, unavailable because I don't have access to mount the DJI volume so this will probably be done in the opposite way if I find something that's on a volume that I don't have access to like this DJI volume but I see oh look it's also on demo media uh, then I can make that the primary and that comes back and now that's available to me and I can open it up in in real time. Oops, that codec is not supported by my media player. I gotta look at that. Um, so um, next thing we'll do uh, from here is get into a little bit more about uh, how we access files not only from this interface but also from the Adobe panel uh, because the last step of this is sort of you know how we get access to the files and, and how we can integrate that access into the application that you're using.